is the hometown boy at the Granby Halls in Leicester, but he's got to overcome an excellent opponent in Sumbu Callum Bay before he can call himself world champion. Leicester's footballers have a real scrap on their hands as well, trying to knock Portsmouth out of the playoffs. Swindon lead on points going to Tranmere. We've the pick of all the playoffs after the big fight. Hello, a very good evening to you all. Chris Pyatt has seen boxers like Chris Eubank and Nigel Benn claim the glory and all the rewards from being world middleweight champion. Tonight, Chris gets a long overdue chance to hop on that bandwagon, but he's going to have to produce the performance of a lifetime. Pyatt has put his time in. He fully deserves this crack at the world middleweight title. He produced the best punch I've seen all year to demolish Colin Manners in February. Callum Bay, though, will be much harder to catch. The Italian-based African, officially 35, but this isn't a faded old figure. He's mixed with the best, McCallum, Barclay and Michael Nunn. Callum Bay has only lost five times in 13 years as a pro. Well, two and a half years ago, Pyatt had an unsuccessful tilt at the World Light Middleweight title, also in Leicester. They're willing him on to succeed this time round at the Granby Halls. Your big fight commentators, Jim Watt and Reg Guttridge. First of all, though, we're going to join the MC, and that's Alan Hughes. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for the big fight live on ITV? Coming from Leicester's Granby Halls, promoted by Barry Hearn on behalf of Matchroom Boxing and sponsored by the Daily Mirror newspaper. Ladies and gentlemen, we are proud to present the main attraction of the evening, a middleweight contest at 11 stone 6 pounds over 12 rounds each of 3 minutes duration for the vacant WBO middleweight championship of the world. Your judges for the contest, all from Puerto Rico, are Nelson Vasquez, Thomas Vasquez Riviera, Cesar Ramos, your WBO supervisor, John Morris of the British Boxing Board of Control, your British Boxing Board steward in charge is Charles Giles, your matchmaker, Frank Turner of London, and your timekeeper, Harry Foxall of Stoke-on-Trent. And when the bell rings and the action begins, your referee is Ismael Fernandez of Puerto Rico. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting and introducing to you in the red corner with the green and the gold shorts, with 57 wins and one draw from 63 contests, 33 KOs, and weighing in at 11 stone 6 pounds from Italy, the former undefeated WBA world champion and the former European middleweight champion, Sambi Kambalai! Ladies and gentlemen, his opponent in the blue corner with the yellow shorts with 39 wins from 42 contests, 30 inside the distance and weighing in at 11 stone, 4.5 pounds from Leicester, the former European light middleweight champion and the reigning WBC international middleweight champion, Chris Dyson Bayer! Ladies and gentlemen, 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant WBO middleweight championship of the world. Well, I'll tell you, it's uh, tremendous coming into the ring here. You can hardly hear yourself speak to your neighbour, actually. It's incredible. So, what's billed as the last chance here for Chris Hyatt? And I must say, it's a, it's a battle of ring generals here. There's no question about that. The, these boys really know their game. Hart has had 220 rounds, Callum Bay 415 pro rounds. Callum Bay came in the ring wearing the, the colours of Zaire, but now is a, a natural, naturalised Italian. But really knows the business. Couple of verdicts over our own Harold Brown. 
very uh, dubious on a couple of occasions apparently but there you go it shows what a good boxer he must be first won the world championship back in 87 against Iran Barkley and they were 15 rounders in those days in Italy made three defenses and the only time he's been knocked over is by Michael Nunn in, uh, in one round now can Pyatt bring off the punches he's moved up from light middleweight but 11 stone four and a half which really is not the full middleweight strength perhaps but he says he wants to get back to boxing rather than look for the one punch all the time which spoiled his chance in this ring against John David Jackson at a lower weight last time he, he just couldn't cope with him because he was trying to knock him out with every punch veteran of 37 although he's now claiming he's a bit younger Callum Bay but it's a bit late to change his age Pyatt's been so much the nearly man he's won the British Championships Commonwealth European vacated them all but been very hot since he joined Barry, Barry Hearn's camp recently 30 stoppages and 39 wins will show what he can do but now can he do it just at the higher weight now against one of the slipperiest and cleverest performers in the business can handle the rough stuff too, Callum Bay. Last year he beat Steve Collins. Dublin is a real rough handle and a 12-rounder for the European Championship and that's now vacated. Jim Pratt's got to make this fellow work all the time now, hasn't he? Yeah, Pyatt has got to control the action as, as much as he possibly can. When you're in with an opponent with the experience of, of Callum Bay, but in with so many top-class fighters, you can't allow him to, to set out the plan and set the pace. But uh, the, the problem is, any time Pyatt makes a mistake, this fellow's going to punish him for it, so he has to set the pace, but do it rather carefully. Not, not an easy match for anybody, some of Callum Bay. He outsmarted one of the best ring generals around him, Mike McCullum. That gives you an idea of his ability. See, these are good punches coming from Pyatt, but they're not landing. That one did. Well, if that's his game plan, to keep busy, sometimes he tends to pose a bit and look for the one shot, but he can't do that this time. He's got to busy himself a bit with this big fellow. Already Callum B's jab looking not too bad, Reg. Accurate the few times he's used it here. See, that's it. As soon as you make a mistake, this fellow will punish you. Well, you warned him, Jim. There you go, he got it part. Took the shot well, though. That was quite a punch. It's a good positive start from Pyatt. Yeah, good opening round, that. Good to see that in a championship fight off, and they, well, they don't exactly laugh about, do they? But uh, sometimes they size each other a bit too much. Bit of caution, but these two, they obviously know both of them, know the business, and let's get on with it. So, vacant championship, and uh, well, this fellow will be, I mean, be quite a performance for him. He doesn't stop winning championships one way or another. His last fight, he had an easy win in Rome against the American who you wouldn't have heard of anyway in April. Uh, just a one-rounder to keep his, keep his punches uh, in, in, in good form, I would have thought. Timing and all that sort of thing. 37, but, well, his boxing doesn't look like it so far anyway. He just doesn't run out of gas. He's proven that he's a long-distance fighter. Ten seconds. Taking the championship away from Gerald McClellan, uh, who beat Julian Jackson on the Lennox Lewis Tucker Bill in Las Vegas recently, to become uh, another version of the championship. Second round.
both parts have been caught by a punch him. It's a good start by him, isn't he? Yeah, it's a good positive start from Pai. He's setting the pace, he's showing the feint, he's trying to draw some mistakes. Pai has to get on top and as early as he possibly can. He's doing it the right way, he's doing it from a tight defence. He can't afford to be reckless, this fella can pick the shot, especially with the counter punches. Cornerman should be able to read this well because Jimmy Tibbs has seen quite a bit of Calibre and has the highest respect for him. So I imagine the, the right words have gone into Pyatt's ear. He's a 10-year pro now, Chris Pyatt, had a great amateur record. ABA Commonwealth Games. The reach of Zip Callum Bay is a bit deceptive here. When he unleashes a punch, you think it may not get there, and it does, doesn't it? The left hand from Callum Bay is a little bit of a problem, both the jab and the hook. Uh, Pai is so intent and trying to gain control. Now and again, he's a little bit reckless, but you can't really advise him to do anything else. If Pai stands off this fella, he'll pick him to pieces. He has to go to him and keep doing as he's doing, and just hope the youth and the strength uh, is the telling factor. Also a problem too that Callum B has always been a middleweight, he's a big middleweight, the Pyatt has just come up to the weight. So there could be quite a difference in their actual weight just at this moment. Came in right on the poundage Callum B, 11 stone 6, 72 kilos. See it's possible with a liquid back in his body he's closer to 12 stone now Reg. Pyatt won't put an awful lot on there uh, from his 11 stone 4.5 weight. In. These are good, powerful shots from Pyatt, but, but they're not getting through. You know, over 12 rounds, you can't really afford to waste too many punches. Well, for he's quite, quite nippy. We saw him in with some straw weights in Glasgow when Paul Weir won the championship. Pyatt is trying to roll right over the top of him, Reg. This is a real good attack in the second round from Pyatt. Coming up to the end of the second round, scheduled for 12, the championships, three minute durations. Well, I think the corner will probably called the fight right there, Jim, haven't they? With the uh, part telling him what to do and chasing all the time. Yeah, he's got to set the pace, he's got to keep doing as he's doing. The only problem, I have to remember, Reg, is 12 rounds, you can't really put too much into punches that have been blocked or missing. He has to take charge as he's doing, but he's putting full power into every shot, and if the punches are not going home cleanly, then 12 rounds is a long time. But he has to force the pace, and that's exactly what he's doing. We have the unofficial scoring of uh, retired referee Harry Gibbs again, who's given the first two rounds to Platt by one point. Bonus, 10 seconds. Usually only give the one, two if there's a knockdown, and if it gets beyond that, well, usually the referee stops you anyway. Seconds out, round three. Third round. WBO vacant middleweight championship. Former world champion here in uh, Cannon Bay, who hasn't been beaten by a non-world champion for 13 years. Now that's, that's a pretty good record. Six World Championship fights and eight for European. He and Dick Tiger, I think, are probably the best middleweights ever to come out of Africa. Calumbay's <laughs> agent, Pepe Ford, was saying how tremendous hard this man trains which is why he's lasting at his age like this. He's fighting a different kind of fight part than he did against John David Jackson in this ring, Jim, uh, when he was a bit disappointing. He's finding this fellow more to his liking, just despite the strong, stronger look about him. Yeah, well, Jackson was very awkward, a, a different, a southpaw boxer, a real problem, but this fella certainly suits him better. 
And I think Pai, he's been world class for so long, and he's been boxing, marking time fights. I think he really needed a big one. And you can see the appetite he's shown already in this one. He's just been waiting for this one. He's just finding it difficult to pin this fellow with clean shots. He's thrown a lot of good punches, but he's tended to miss a little bit. It's Callum Bay with the experience, he's slipping and blocking and, and sliding through the punches. Oh, beautiful counters there by Pyatt. It looked like Callum Bay was going to get through there. Stood his ground and flat footed, got full weight into his punches there, Pyatt. Good start. Pyatt's looking really sharp, Reg. Is that, I mean, he couldn't have hoped for a, for a better start. The only thing I would worry about is if uh, Carlin Bay weathers the early rounds, Pyatt can't afford to go tired against this fellow. This fellow can go on forever. Punch himself out though, part, but uh, he's got an old head on those 29 year old shoulders anyway. Don't mind throwing the shots hard, Reggie, for getting through, and they're starting to get through here now. <laughs> well, that's 3 0 definitely there to part. What a good start for him. I've seen this man quite a few times. I can't remember him being apart from the one rounder with uh, Michael Nunn, and that amounted to a few punches. Or he's taking so many punches so early on, Jim. Yeah, well, that was the first time that Pyatt really opened up Callum Bay's defence. He's got through with three or four real good clean shots consecutively. Callum Bay been very smart, very clever, just sliding past the punches, blocking them. But that time, Pyatt really got control, really got on top. And Pyatt really looking sharp. Everything he does is showing sharpness and power. A tremendous start from Pyatt, and he has to keep doing what he's doing. He can't afford to drop the pace. He's well winning the rounds, and if he gets himself, if he can, if he can get the first six rounds under his belt, Reg, even if he has to coast for a couple of rounds to get his strength back, then there's no way he's going to be outpointed. So he wants to keep this going at least to the halfway stage. Seconds out. Out for round four. Good competitive fight, isn't it? Don't write the old lad off yet, he's, he's, a, bit, he's a bit cunning. See, Callum Bay's obviously going to produce his best work when the pace slows. So if Pyatt can get him so five or six rounds ahead by then, then he'll be in a real good position. See, Pyatt's only lost really, apart from a very bad eye early on in his career, which was meaningless to two world champions, who strangely enough are both still world champions. So his record stands up. <laughs> Callum B's trying to get his own punches off a little bit quicker now. I mean, Pyatt started to roll over him in the third round there, so he's got to try and get them out quicker, and that's what he's doing. But Pyatt's still throwing the better punches. So a minute gone in the fourth round then. A little bit wild with the right hand. He spars a lot with uh, Chris Eubank, by the way, part he has done over the year. And uh, I hope he hasn't copied that wild right hand that Eubank uses and misses too often with. See, the good thing about what Pai is doing, he's not allowing Callum B to do anything effective. So for that reason alone, he's winning the round. Callum Bay showing a bit more resistance in this round than he did in the previous, but still Pyatt, still got the edge. Callum Bay's 
too wise now to do try and do any coasting and wait for the later rounds. He knows he's behind. I've still got the fear that Pyatt using up an awful lot of steam here. If it goes to the, the later rounds, uh, it could be telling just at the energy that he's used up. Coming up for the end of the fourth. Yeah, I think that'll be quite a worry really for Pyatt. He gets himself in great condition these days. He hasn't, he's always been a fair trainer and uh, sometimes he's been a bit wayward in his lifestyle but he's got that, seems to have got that back joint in the matchroom camp. And uh, Jimmy Tibbs there, tough taskmaster, works with Nigel Ben among others and Dean Powell in the corner. Not too much noise going on over there too, that's a good sign really that they're quite confident the way their man's going. Don't have to tell him too much, he knows the business too well. And there's uh, the ex-champ, and uh, wondering what's happened here. I think he's fighting in the other guy's backyard, but he, he's had Four his share in his seconds. backyard, which is now Italy. Married there and become a family man. Second down, round, round five. five. Comes a time in the, the veteran fighters' life gym, and they've got to sort of start worrying about the young lions coming at them, and that's what Pyatt's looking like. Yeah, well, Callum B obviously knows Reg. He has to change what's been happening. He's going to start trying to back Pyatt up. That's what he's doing at the start of the round. I think he's going to continue. He's going to try and get Pyatt on his back foot, get some of the sting out of his punches, and try and get some control. A good right hand from Callum B. He mustn't run on to those part there, he was a bit square on with that uppercut coming at him. Now and again, Chris is just a little bit wild, just a little bit over anxious to get the, the punches in. See, all these missed punches have taken steam out of tyre. He needs just a little bit more control, he still has to try to be the boss, but just a little bit more control. He's trying to dig them in downstairs as well now. See, Pai is making them fight here, Reg. Oh, he's forcing him into it all the time. Trying to take the play away from him. But Pai, remember, Jim's also durable. He's only been stopped once, and that was with a cut eye. Been in with world champions, he's still, still gone the distance. Just dropping down a gear wedge. I mean, there's no way he could maintain that pace. That, that was a tremendous pace for the first four rounds. He's dropping the pace, and, and this is where it's dangerous if he doesn't tighten up the defence a little bit. He's still standing in punching range, so he's got to tighten up the defence if he's not throwing the first shots. Last round was pretty even. Oh, he's got through with an uppercut there. There. And the right hook that runs it down the hand. How you describe them, they still get through. See, Pai, I must be feeling a difference hitting these middle ways, Reg. I mean, these guys are, come down from 12 stone. And this fella really takes a shot well. Yeah, he's one of the most durable fighters in the world, or has been for some years now, hasn't he, uh, Callum Bay? There's an unusual interview for uh, Gary Newborn with the Birmingham City chair lady, Karen Brady.
Well, Karen, you're the managing director of Birmingham City, but you're also Chris Pyatt's flatmate. Have I got the description right there? Yeah, my flatmate is my friend as well, so I'm here tonight giving him the support that he deserves. Well, obviously, stamina is going to be very important. I think we can reveal now that he's had flu very recently. How yeah, badly? about 10 weeks ago, he had flu. He had a very bad fever. Um, we sent for the doctor who's given him the all clear and obviously he's he's feeling a lot better now and he's giving a great fight tonight. He's very underrated, Chris. And I think tonight he's come out here to win and I think he's, he's a very good fight, yeah. Thank you. My pleasure. So, coming up for round six. Seconds out, round six. Caleb May didn't like just have won that last round, although Park came in right at the end with some fair punches. Yeah, it's, it's difficult to say. It's, uh, that one really was a close round, but uh, the difference was the fact that Pyatt had to drop down a gear, and it's not surprising, no way he could box his pace for 12 rounds. But uh, the ominous thing is the fact that Callum B's starting to be back into things, and, and he's showing his own punching power once or twice. At this stage of the game, Harry Gibbs is unofficial, he's got to fire two points up. Doesn't necessarily mean rounds, if somebody wins it by two points uh, one round, that uh, can throw you when you're adding up the rounds, but then at the moment they're only one point, ten against nine. That overhand right again gets through, it doesn't seem to be troubling Carlin Bay too much, but it's a good punch from Pyatt. That one was a little bit wild that time. Uh, he's got that sort of almost Mike Tyson neck, doesn't he, uh, Callum Bay, who absorbs a shot. Just lifting part tonight, fighting in his hometown, although he was actually born in London, but he uh, came to Leicester very early in his life. <laughs> Minute to go in this round. Think of the hard nuts gym that this fella Callum Bay has been in. You know, it's a good performance still by part, although we know there's a long way to go. Just now and again, Callum Bay starts pushing Pyatt back and he looks that little bit stronger. As I was saying earlier, a full middleweight who's always been a middleweight against that light middleweight who's come up. Just now and again, he looks that bit stronger. He's parked himself on the ropes there, part. He doesn't want to be shoving Callum Bay too much, Jim, that's wasting a bit of energy, he's been doing that a bit. A little bit of damage appearing in Pyatt's left eye, it's more of a, a kind of bruise or a graze, it's not a cut, thankfully. Callum is so strong. Good clean fight there, they've got respect for each other there. There's no flouting of rules at all, and uh, the Puerto Rican referees had an easy number. And remember that there are three Puerto Rican judges, should it go 12? There it is, Jim. Well, that was when they, yeah, they volunteered to go back to the ropes area. It wasn't pushed back, which is not quite so serious. But uh, just once or twice, when Callum Bay starts backing him up, he really looks very, very powerful. If Pyatt can keep coming forward, keep taking charge, but if he starts backing off from this fellow, he's going to run into some trouble. Corners, 10 seconds. There you are, duck and dive a little bit. Jimmy Tibbs knows all about that. But uh, when the bell goes, well, he gets out. Round out. seven. And it's still the loneliest place in the world. Round seven. Well, Paya must have a decent lead going into the second half of the fight, Reg, and I'm sure that's what, what he planned. When you see the pace he started at. So if he can maintain that for another couple of rounds, then it might just put it out of Callum Bay's reach. 
But uh, this is the tough part now, when the pace slows and Carlin Bay's experience starts to come into things. Coming into this fight, and this is exactly as I thought it would go. I kept telling people it's going to be a hard, tough fight between good ringmen. Both tradesmen know what it's about. Both take a good punch and both land a good punch. consecutive there, Jim, and they're simultaneous, right on the chin. Well, Pyatt took that one flush in the chin and he took it well. So that, that's a, a nice, happy sign for Pyatt. I don't think Caliban's going to catch him any stronger than that. Full of fire, isn't he, Pyatt? I haven't seen him like this for years, actually. It's just total commitment from Pai. I think he's been waiting for the big fight for the last couple of years. Now, now it's come, he realises it's probably his last chance, and that's the way he's going about it. It's good division, actually, the middleweights, to, to make some money if Pai can win this. Apart from the home breed with Frank Grant champion, Richie Wall, Woodall a champion, Steve Collins of Dublin, good competition. And then of course the world class stuff with uh, McClellan, Reggie Johnson. Callum Bay starting to do some good stuff himself now, Reggie. A little faint followed by a couple of double shots here. See the pace has slowed and now Callum Bay's beginning to look a bit more effective. Pyatt's taking a little bit longer now to get the punches off. He's obviously feeling the pace that he's set. And up the end of round seven. mileage covered in the road work with these two fellas Jim isn't it now this is as you say where the stamina getting up early in the morning and those road runs and then getting in the gym and working so hard and this is where Callum Bay's experience uh, is going to be a big asset yeah, I mean Pyatt has used up an awful lot of steam in the first seven rounds see and he's really forcing himself into the fights everything he does is with full power and he's really going to have to be in good shape uh, to hang in there for the rest of this fight. Now that was the one that caught him bang on the chin, but didn't budge him at all. He came straight through that punch. That's also a sign of the appetite he's shown in this fight. That was a cracking shot he took, and he just come right through and got him his own punches. Bonus 10 seconds. Round eight. And the unofficial score, and emphasize that of Harry Gibbs, is two points ahead for. Part. In this case, it will be two rounds as well. But uh, you never know how the Puerto Ricans will be reading this. I can't remember when there were three Puerto Rican judges for a world title fight, certainly in Europe. Two of them worked. Uh, at the Glasgow Championship show last Saturday. See, see that jab now is a problem for Pyatt because he's not getting his own punches off as quick as he was, obviously because of the pace that he's set, and that jab could become a problem. Yeah, good up 
They're both using the uppercut. Possibly Calabrese having more success with it. Yeah. Slightly low, I think, there, but nothing to worry about. Alan Bay wasn't complaining, he was having a good time. Pyatt not getting these punches home now, Reg, and he's really throwing himself in. At every punch he throws, he's really throwing himself at Callumby. Callumby looking a little bit more controlled than Pyatt at the moment. Minute to go. There's really plenty of action. Pai is not as accurate, Reg, but he's keeping himself in it because of the volume of punches that he's throwing. But uh, Callum B is pinning him down again with some nice looking counters. How have you got it, Jim? Well, after seven, I had Pai at three rounds in front, which was one better than uh, Harry Gibbs had him. But uh, the point is now, now is the part of the fight that Callum Bay is going to start showing his skills. So look at this, real class punches now coming from Callum Bay. There it is, uh, he needs a heavy wash and brush up for that one because the, the going is now getting harder, as one would expect anyway. That's what World Championships are all about. Jim, the overhead shot in replay there. Well, that, was again. that right hand yeah, that we were see, talking about there. See, that one had a little bit more effect. That one, it just caught me. He dropped it down onto his chin, but Payet took it well. But the fact that he took the, the uppercut right after that, maybe we're still feeling the effects, but that was a lovely shot. Payet took it well, but he doesn't want to take too many of them. Payet, a lot of work in that round, but I thought uh, Callum Bay started uh, landing the accurate stuff, a little bit more accurate than Payet. Bonus 10 seconds. So let's see now the, how the scorecard is. 77 to 76. It's closing now, isn't it? One point up for uh, Pyatt. See, Chris's problems are always going to come if he starts to go tired against this fellow. One of the real good solid pros in the game, and if Pyatt does go tired, then his early points lead, you can see that dwindling. So I saw this really, Jim, after a couple of rounds. So long as he can just cling to that lead. He's going to have to do it in work right now, Reg. Uh, Callum Bay's looking a little bit sleeker than him at times. He's a little bit more controlled. So Pyatt is going to have to do it the hard way and do it on work rate. I don't think he can outsmart Carla Bay, that's his kind of battle, so he's just going to have to keep going, trying to get his punches off first. He's in great shape for a veteran gym, isn't he? Yeah, and he knows exactly how to pace. See, in the early rounds, he was losing the rounds, but he was staying in range, and he was making higher, work hard and throw plenty of punches. Now he's starting to enjoy himself a little bit more, but Pyatt still trying to keep control of things. Certainly the crowd got him right behind him now, Pyatt. See, these big misses are Pyatt all the time, Reg. It takes a lot of your strength. Blowing hard part too, isn't he? As we come up to the last minute of the night, Jim. Well, he's entitled to blow hard, Reg, because he really set a pace. I thought it was a little bit reckless in the first three rounds. Just put too much work into winning those rounds. Now it's really reached the hard part. Now there are 
in the trenches now, all right? But Callum Bay is still reacting to what Pyatt does. He's not trying to take command. He's still allowing Chris to make the first move. So, I mean, he obviously doesn't feel as ready to try to take control. Pyatt must still have a lot of strength in there. Signs of a bit of tiredness there though, Jim's looking to hang on a bit there. There's uh, Gary Newbon again, this time is uh, Barry Hunt. Barry, I can tell you that Harry Gibbs' is unofficial ring card has the fight absolutely level now. Now, does Chris really have it in the tank? He's looking a bit tired. He's looking absolutely exhausted. This is one of the great performances by a middleweight in England against a world-class middleweight. I'm going to disagree with Harry Gibb because I've got Pyatt three rounds in front of my card. Maybe a bit of bias scoring, but listen, the danger rounds now are around 10-11. Sheer nerve can hold him together in the 12, but really we're under danger at 10-11 because Chris is running out of steam fast. I mean, is he going to run out of steam well before the finish? Is he going to hang on? If he can get to that 12th round, he can hang on for three minutes because this is one brave son of a gun. But now the next two rounds are absolutely vital, but to my mind, he's in front of the moment. Gripping stuff. Thank you, Barry. Second round, round well, everybody's giving their opinions, aren't they? Out for the 10th round. Jim, you want to join in the opinions there? I still got Pyatt one round in front, Reg. The problem now being you have to decide is the what rate of Pyatt or the accuracy of the counter punches from Callum Bay what you want to go with. The fight is so evenly balanced, you have to take your choice. But I would imagine now that Callum Bay will start trying to back Pyatt up the next couple of rounds because he really is boxing away from home, he has to be seen to win the thing. So he's going to have to try and take charge. He hasn't really tried to take charge so far. He's been reacting to what Pai has been doing. So I would imagine a big drive coming from Callum Bay now. Just a reminder, WBO, vacant middleweight championship of the world then. Sambu Callum Bay, from Zaire and now Italy. Chris Park of Leicester. tell you, you couldn't ask for any more commitment from Pyatt, could you? He's giving everything he's got, he's not even thinking about pacing or holding back. Everything he's got goes right into every punch. He, he really it. is looking tired now. Yeah, he wants it so badly, he can taste it to Pyatt there, but I tell you, as you say, he's got to fight a bit of a crafty fight, actually, for the last few rounds, try and hang in there. Be feeling exhausted, but he's just driving himself on. Oh, there's punches underneath from Callum Bay, Jim. His part walked in there. See, as soon as Pyatt takes one backward step, Callum Bay looks upon it as a weakness and he tries to capitalise on it, so Pyatt has to keep pushing himself forward as he's doing, just try and win this on volume of punches. Callum Bay hasn't been as accurate in this round for the counters. Unrelenting though, isn't it? Hard battle. Jim, I hope they find a winner this time. We don't want the, the draw as we had uh, with Eubank and Ray Close last Saturday. Well, not so many clean punches landed in this round, Reg. I'm giving it to Pyatt for sheer commitment. I think the good news, Reg, that round took a fair bit out of Callum Bay. He really looked weird again back to his corner as well. Man called uh, Emio Garazia. 
in the corner there it's uh, been around him all the time and he understands Italian now apparently Jim I think Callaby tiring come watching out. this isn't it yeah well I think Callaby came out looking for a big round in that round and he didn't get it full credit to Payet kept the volume going just kept forcing him so forward he must be totally exhausted finished the round well and he's got it on my card sheer volume of punches and the fact that Callumby wasn't half as accurate with the counters. Bonus 10 seconds. Round 11. And we're up to round 11 of this championship of the world and don't forget there's football after this. From the Brandy Halls, Leicester. That's that annoying jab we were talking about earlier. Callaby started using it again. Pai is going to have to march right through that jab. Certainly deafening there, the cheers for Pai, as you would expect. Great gutsy performance by Pai against a really skilled champion. The last time I saw so, so much commitment in a fight, Reg, was in Michael Watson in the second tragic fight with Eubank. This is the way Michael Watson performed, just kept going forward for the full, the full time the fight lasted, and Pai is trying to do it the same way. Well, I'm, with, I'm with you, Jim. I would say there's still only a round in it, but probably parts ahead by that round. Well, I've got Pai at two rounds in front, unless uh, my mental arithmetic's gone. I had a one round in front I gave him the previous round. So, if he can at least share this one. And Callaby certainly not taking control. He's missing as much as Pai is now. They're both desperately tired. It's good to see a great battle like this, full of honest endeavours. There's plenty of gut, plenty of skill. Great fitness and solid hitting. It's the commitment that's really impressed me more than anything. The way Pai is going to bite this. Alan Bay's corner men there standing almost on the apron ring. He tried to wave him on to go forward, go forward. They're suspecting that he might not get this. All gone, nothing left, just the, the big heart. The referee really got himself caught up with that one. What a pace this gym. It's almost like the first round all over again in the 11th. The pace has never subsided right from the first round. Obviously, that did drop a little bit. The first three rounds, the the pace, I've never seen anything like it from Pia, and he's now feeling the effects of it. Well, he could be only three minutes away from winning the championship of the world now. And quite honestly, nobody deserved it more than this guy. He's had so much, uh, well, bad luck at times, really. He had to wait around, always missing his big opportunity, and now he's grabbed it. The last one, well, as Jim Watt was saying, was a very awkward opponent in his previous challenge, John David Jackson, a runner. But this fellow has at least come to make him fight, and it's been a good one. So it'll be champagne if he wants it after the end of this round instead of this. Have a look then again at uh, Harry Gibbs card. And he's got it dead level as you can see there. But Jim what and I still think that parts got one, maybe two rounds, Jim. Yeah, Ball over the ten seconds. I scored the last round even, so I still have fight a couple of rounds in front. So I've got Pyre ready to pick up a world Second championship here. Oh, crowd, there it is, look, you can see it on their feet there for this. Just, you could choke with the excitement of the 
of the crowd around us here. Well, I think these three Puerto Rican judges can, can hear that, and I, think, I don't think they'll go the other way. Greg, when you think about, about this fight round by round, it's always difficult to score. But when you think about the complete 12 rounds, High has always been the one marching forward, making the fight, setting the pace, and that has to swing the close rounds in his favour. He's always been the one really setting the pace. Yeah, he's going to get it. Well, I say he is, how do we know with the... Sometimes these, these judges look at it completely differently from a different part of the world, but I doubt it. They, they love the aggressive action, and that's certainly what Pyatt has been providing. See, never at any time has Callum B come forward and maintain the attacks. He's always reacted to what Pyatt has done. So you have to give Pyatt the edge in such a close fight. If this continues, he's got to get it a couple of rounds, Reg. An absolute stormer. Absolutely standing on my shoulders here, Jim, as you're doing the commentary. It's incredible. The Park family. What a great finish. 60 seconds now. Is he going to get that glory? See, Ty is just so tired, he's just trying to keep close. So that Callum B can't be effective with the count, doesn't just keep pumping out his own hands, but he doesn't have the strength now to trouble or hurt Callum B. He just has to hang in there. Nothing left but courage, so tired. A great satisfaction for Park will be if he gets this championship, and both him and I think he will, that he's beaten a great fighter to get it. That's all it's something they can be very proud of. Just a little bit of care in the last 20 seconds is what we want from Pyatt. Go run on to one big silly punch because Callum B's looking for it here. Yeah, there he goes, the countdown then. Jim, final decision on that. Yeah, I'll give it Chris Pyatt, Reg, couple of rounds. Well, the crowd have gone mad. We'll take a quick break while they're looking at the scorecards and the result directly afterwards. Welcome back, and here's the result from the MC. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Judge Nelson of Asquez scores the contest 115 to 113. Two rounds. Judge Thomas of Asquez of Riviera scores the contest 116 to 114. One round. Judge Cesar Ramos. Scores Two the rounds, contest, sorry. 116 to 113. Good scoring. The winner and the new WBO champion of the world, Chris Park! So Chris Park gets it and thoroughly deserves it. Good scoring by the judges there. So Jim, we're just uh, ready to pack up there. Jimmy Tibbs giving in the big paddle. Final quick word. Yeah, tremendous. Total commitment from Chris Pyatt. If you look at it as a 12-round spectacle, Pyatt had to be the winner. He's, he kept judging over 12 full rounds, a great performance. Now being presented by John Morris, the WBO supervisor, to the new world champion, Chris Pyatt, ladies and gentlemen. So there it is now. This is the moment he's waiting for. The WBO belt there by the supervisor from Britain, actually, John Morris. So a great night for Chris Pyatt from Leicester. Can I ask you please to show your appreciation for a tremendous loser, Simba Kalambe! So I right, believe they're giving good cheer to the loser as well. Great fight. It was indeed a heck of a good fight, that one, and Chris Pyatt, the new world champion. He goes into the mix now with the likes of Nigel Benn and Chris Eubank. We've got some great football action coming up for you right now, action from tonight's playoffs.